The claim I'm responding to is that Planned Parenthood helps many men and women because they provide multiple beneficial services and the budget cuts would keep them from functioning at full capacity. My opponent's secondary claims were one, Planned Parenthood is undergoing budget cuts due to abortion. Two, services may not stop altogether, but budget cuts would put limits on services. And three, Planned Parenthood makes a greater appeal than a doctor's office. In response to their first secondary claim that Planned Parenthood is undergoing budget cuts due to abortion, the advocate claimed that Cecile Richards, who is the president of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, said that only 3% of Planned Parenthood services are related to abortion. I was able to find this interview and confirm that she said this in March 2011. Only a month before, in February of 2011, she claimed that less than 10% of our services are related to abortion. Although the advocate points out that politicians are focusing all their attention on abortion because it is, it is a hot topic, I'm forgetting about the other beneficial services that they provide. The truth is that abortion is a really hot topic. And to show you how hot this topic really is, ABC News conducted a poll in January of this year. Eight in 10 say an abortion should be legal to save a woman's life, to preserve her health, or when the pregnancy was caused by rape or incest. A much smaller majority, 54%, support legal abortion if there's evidence that the baby will be physically impaired. However, 57% oppose abortion solely to end an unwanted pregnancy. Now, as an audience, I'm sure all these percentages and numbers are extremely confusing, which reflects that the issue is extremely confusing. In fact, most people don't have a black and white view of abortion and are divided by the circumstances. I believe that in order for anybody, whether it be the advocate or Cecile Richards, the president of Planned Parenthood, to make a strong and effective argument defending abortion services, numbers need to be clarified. And maybe even numbers about the conditions in which these services are performed need to be released. Because in reality, as hot as a topic that abortion is, so is our tax money. And people have the right to know where their money is going. The second secondary claim was that services may not stop altogether, but budget cuts would put limits on services. First of all, the advocate never gave us any solid information on how the budget cuts would really limit the services. I believe that the secondary claim actually weakens the main claim. How bad can it be to merely limit the services? In fiscal year 2008-2009, according to the official Planned Parenthood annual report available on their website, their total revenue was at $1.1 billion. A third of this money, $363 million, comes from government grants, our taxpayers. According to the same report, Planned Parenthood had an excess of revenue of $63.4 million. And for fiscal year 2007-2008, they had an excess of revenue of even more, $85 million. So if the federal government stops providing funding to Planned Parenthood, they would be forced to make up for the $300 million through private donations, fundraising, their customers, and most importantly, by cutting expenditures. The Planned Parenthood website informs us that the majority of services, family planning, birth control, GYN exams, pregnancy testing, STI testing, and other reproductive health care services are available on a sliding fee scale based on the income. But the truth is that Planned Parenthood does not research your income or ability to pay. You have the option to pay a small fee or to not pay at all. And um, a very important principle of economics is that consumers of a good or service will exploit all opportunities to make themselves better off. I mean, logically it makes sense if you're given an option to pay or not, how many people really are going to pay. Um, not very many, that's for sure. And if all customers if all customers of Planned Parenthood are charged a minimal fee, and if Planned Parenthood continues to collect money through donations and fundraising, I don't believe that services will be tragically affected. What is most likely to happen is that the number of consumers that exploit or take advantage of the free services will be reduced. And since um, Planned Parenthood reminds us that one in five American women are helped by their organization sometime in their lives, if they were to undergo federal budget cuts, I would imagine donations increasing from the many supporters of Planned Parenthood, including large corporations. 
realistically, there's probably no way that they could raise the same amount of money that's granted to them by the government. But with a tighter budget, the organization may actually increase their productivity and effectiveness, since they will inevitably focus more on their expenditures where their money is needed most. All right, uh, you laid out the points pretty clearly. The signposting was easy to follow. Um, it first it sounds like you're going to be making some argument about it, the inconsistency of the percentages that the uh, the uh, president of the Planned Parenthood group had, but that turns out not to be really what your focus is. It really is just a discussion about how abortion is part of the services on that first point, and it's controversial. I think you get sidetracked on that issue, and uh, it really doesn't help focus the argument on the issues that the advocate was talking about. Um, is it uh, controversial? Yes. Are there disputes about how people feel about it? Yes. Is that the reason that people want to cut the funding for Planned Parenthood? Maybe. And um, But the argument is whether or not it's going to affect other services, and that's, I think, uh, where you ought to be focusing. And in the second point, you do a very good job of that. I thought that you did a nice job looking at the budget, analyzing what their costs are, pointing out that they have had excess revenues in a couple of the recent years. Um, then an argument about the sliding scale fee issue. I think you've got a good generalization that you're trying to apply to this. It's a, it's a presupposition, but it sounds like it's a pretty good presupposition on that point. All right. Thank you.